Hi everyone. Um, it is I, Palmarama. Um, I'm back. I'm back in LA. Oh my god, it feels good. It feels so good to be back. I cannot tell you how happy I am. We haven't been home in 18 months. 18 months. Um, we had visa issues. I couldn't get into the country because I didn't have an ESTA, which I thought I had. Um, and then I was applying for the green card and I couldn't come in and out, blah, blah, blah. Long story, but had some visa issues. And then COVID and I was stuck in Australia. I wasn't able to come. I didn't, couldn't get an exemption to come back to America. Then I went to uh, Wales for six months. So I actually haven't been here for 18 months. And although Adelaide is our home as well, um, we have two homes and we've been in Adelaide. We quarantined in Adelaide. It was the best experience ever. I wouldn't have like, I wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else but Adelaide during that experience. Um, but of course I missed here. I just haven't, I haven't been here for so long. I love our home. I love the restaurants. I love my friends. Not that I'm seeing them right now because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but it just feels good to be on kind of home turf after being in Wales for six months. So we're pretty jet lagged. We got back about three days ago. The flight was great. Um, there was no one on the flight. So the whole plane, there was only 30 people, which was just insane. Um, because we were flown by uh, production, we were in business class, which is a bit fancy. But, um, you know, when we fly ourselves, we do not fly ourselves business class because it's too expensive. Um, however, it was really nice that we all had our own bed. Poet, who's technically a lap child because she's still under the age of two, she was able to have a um, lie down seat because there's just no one in the section. So they were like, oh yeah, she can sleep wherever she wants. So that was really handy. She wet the plane seat though. That wasn't great. Um, and yeah, it just went really well. We've been jet lagged. So we've been up kind of first night, we were all awake by like 1.30. Second night was pretty good. We, we were awake for like an hour at 1.30 and everyone managed to get back to bed and wake up at six. Last night we were asleep by 9.15 and um, Bodhi and Forrest woke us up about four. So I think tonight's the night. Tonight's the one where we're gonna kick it for good. Um, I have been Marie Kondoing. So the moment I got here, I think because in Wales we have so much space, we were staying in this really beautiful home and there's just there's just so much space. Kids could run around everywhere. There was, there was just room for their toys. And in Adelaide, um, even though our house only has two bedrooms, the main house, uh, we have this really massive living area, like the just a huge living area. And then only two bedrooms and a really big kitchen, but there's just a lot of space. And so when we got back here, suddenly we've got like a little um, tree house here. It's a um, two and a half story tree house. And it's, you know, there's, it's smaller in a sense. It's probably a similar square footage, but because of the layout on the different levels, it's been feeling um, like we have too much stuff in the house. So we got here and I was like, we're bringing 15 suitcases and we already have a house full of so many clothes and so many toys and just so much stuff that I'd forgotten about, frankly, that I've gotten here and immediately just got into nesting mode. I want to get rid of half the stuff in our house. I think we have too much stuff. Um, so we've been doing Marie Kondo. I'll show you what my bedroom looks like currently. Well, this is my bedroom. Oh my goodness. Um, so really trying to get rid of a lot of stuff, do a, do a big purge so that we can unpack the bags. I haven't been able to unpack yet because I feel like frankly, we don't have enough room to put the stuff anywhere. I don't definitely don't have any more closet space. So I've gotten rid of about 50% of my wardrobe. Um, I think I'm gonna keep culling as well. I'm just gonna get really brutal and we're sending everything that we don't need anymore to the Poor People's Army in Philadelphia, which is my um, mother-in-law's uh, organization helping poor people. People in impoverished situations, they overtake um, abandoned homes and abandoned buildings. So they call them takeover houses. So they're typically government houses which have just become abandoned. 
and they'll move families in there. I know it's the middle of winter there, it's absolutely freezing, so this is such a necessity. And we thought, we have so much stuff. We have baby things, we have toys, we have clothes, just so much we can send these families who have nothing. Um, but let's do it and it feels really good. It's not just a purge and then you're just kind of sending it out anywhere or dropping it off with goodwill and not thinking about where it's gonna go. Um, this is actually gonna go into the homes of people who really, really need it. So that's really keeping me motivated. Um, I did a 12 hour day yesterday. Today I'll do another 12 hour day. I'm starting just with the clothes mainly. Um, and then I'm going to move on to toys and then we're going to do books like Marie Kondo talks about, I think it's five or six different areas, but I am, I'm going to go like, instead of room by room, we're going to do, uh, stuff like paperwork and books and clothes and toys and, you know, electronics. So I'm excited to do that. I, I want to feel great in my home and it definitely, I got back and, I think because Poet's older now and we've got Isaac here too. It's like the four of them running around. It's like it suddenly felt like, oh, we don't need all this stuff. We actually just need more room for people. Um, so that feels really good. Pregnancy-wise this week, I've been feeling great. Um, I got my NIPT results back last week, which is great. Low probability for everything. Um and super good numbers too. Like the nurse just said, oh, this is just such low probability that there's anything wrong at all. She's like, these are amazing numbers. You should feel really happy. Confirmed it's a girl. Um, definitely a little girl in there, which is so sweet and exciting. Um, and I just love that. I love that we're having a little girl. Um, and most importantly, that she is healthy. Uh, obviously, we still have to get through the 20-week scan. This week, I have to have my... Um, it'll be next week because I'm actually in isolation right now. Um, next week, I am meeting with Dr. Jay Goldberg, who Sarah births with, who's an amazing doctor here in LA. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to become a patient of his because I'm not getting down to Australia until I'm about 32 weeks pregnant. So... I need someone to help see me through my pregnancy. Um, I have to do obviously the 20 week scan and then I have to start, I got to get this antibodies test to see if there's any antibodies, which is just a regular screening um, that at 12 weeks you have to get to make sure that you, you don't have any antibodies. And last time, obviously with Poa, I did. I didn't with the boys, with Poa, I did. Um, and that might have something to do with the fact that she has the same blood antigen that Mark has, which is called the Duffy antigen. Um, and so my body started thinking that it wanted to um, reject her, but it didn't. Like I said last video, my body just, it, they get you get checked um, every few weeks. You get your blood tested for these things called your titers to see like the level of antibodies in your blood that is trying to fight off this um, thing that it sees as foreign, which is this antigen that obviously Poet inherited from Mark, which is this very rare antigen that he has. Um, your body's meant to start fighting it. And as I said last week, mine just didn't. Mine, after that first initial test, it was zero, 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 zero every single time, which is quite unheard of. So I'm hopeful that they do say it can get worse each pregnancy. So I'm hopeful that when I get the test, I'm assuming it's going to be positive again for antibodies, but I hope that it's sort of mirrors poets pregnancy in that my body just doesn't look at, at it as something that's scary and that it needs to fight off. So hopefully it's just really super low titers and low numbers the whole way through. Um, because that also does affect like my birth and you know i love birthing with my midwife julie this is probably going to be her last year um and i'm getting right in there before she finishes up she's my favorite midwife in the world i love birthing with her i love you you just get to the hospital when you think it's go time and get in the bath and then you give birth and she's so 
supportive and amazing and also hands off. She lets you do your thing. Um, and so I'm really excited to do that with her again. Um, and it'll be good just to get this antibodies test out of the way because I'm just assuming it's going to be positive um, and then it needs to be monitored. So, you know, I'll have a little bit more monitoring than most people, um, but we'll see. Uh, I've gained a fair bit of weight. I think I've gained about six or seven pounds, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but on my frame, it is, and um, it was problematic for my show <laughs> because I looked really different um, at the end of the season than I did at the beginning of the season. And the funny thing was that the beginning of the season, my character was meant to be pregnant and the end of the season, she's not meant to be pregnant. So it should have really been switched, but um, it's fine. I had to sort of work around it. I, we had to change my clothes. We had to cut into a lot of my clothes. Um, but I'm feeling really good. Some slight food aversions, but I'm um, generally just feeling awesome. Uh, let me show you my belly. Sorry, I'm in my pajamas and I'm braless. Oh, well, got a real sexy look. Okay, well, here's my belly. Belly, 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 belly. So this is my little 12 week, four day belly. Oh, can you see it properly? There we go. <clears throat> um yeah so that's kind of it i'm trying to think of what else i feel back to myself i feel like i have my energy back even though i'm tired from being jet lagged um i have my hair blow dried that's why it looks like this uh we were meant to be on the kelly clarkson show two days ago but we got there like hair and makeup and then it got cancelled because she lost her voice um so I kept my blow dryer. I haven't, I haven't washed it. Oh, that's quite funny actually. So we got here and we started like using the toilets obviously. And then the toilets basically all exploded. Our water system just decided to cark itself. It's done. It's over having people at the house. I think it was so used to like not being used. And now it's being used by the many bodies in our house. And the pump just blew up. We have no water on this side of the house, um, on the older side of the house, we do. So I can't just wake up and pee in the middle of the night. I have to like go up onto the other side of the house and pee. So actually I've been peeing in the shower, which has been really cool. So I'll pee in the shower and then I'll use a cup to sort of wash it down. And that's been fantastic. So um, exactly what I feel like doing jet lagged, pregnant, breastfeeding. Oh yeah, and breastfeeding. So I'm still breastfeeding poet. Um, uh, and I will tandem breastfeed. So I'll breastfeed throughout the pregnancy. I assume my milk will dry up relatively soon. Um, she'll probably be like Forrest who, oh no, yep, Forrest and like Bodie. They both dry nursed even through, um, you know, the period of time when I just had no milk. They just kept dry nursing until the milk came back in. Um, and I assume she's going to do that. She's definitely more of a boob girl than the boys. Um... Although they were all obsessed with the boob, let's just be honest. They they loved nursing. All of them loved nursing so much. Um, and I nursed them all until, like, Bodhi was, like, three and change, maybe three and a half. Forrest was, like, I nursed him until I think he was three and a half as well. So Poet, I assume, is just going to continue on. Um, they all just, like, weaned naturally. Although I will say with the boys... At that age, after about two and a half, they were only really breastfeeding once a day right before bed. Um, so it's not like I was nursing all through the day. And so with Poet, I think she'll probably continue nursing the way she is because she'll be under two and a half by the time the baby's born. So um, yeah, still throughout the night. I was thinking of maybe night weaning her uh, after her second birthday, um, just because I feel like that's, around about the time the boys stop nursing at night time so i just think organically maybe she'll be ready to stop by then uh and that's it guys that's it for my 12 week i will keep you posted on everything and um i will see you next week Mwah. okay bye